How deep is the night? Well, we really don't know. We only know the accurate positions of a small fraction of stars in the Milky Way galaxy. And we've only really mapped maybe 3 or 4% of all the galaxies out there. But you really can get a feel for how deep the cosmos is just by using your telescope. One of the best ways to do that is to look for objects which don't seem to have hard edges. Astronomers call them fuzzies. They can be comets, nebulas, or galaxies, but each type lie at a vastly different distance from the others. Comets are extremely close in. They are part of our solar system. We usually see them when they're just a few light minutes away. Nebulas are much farther out. These remnants of dead and dying stars generally lie within our galaxy. None is closer than about 15 light years, and most are at much greater distances. But you'd have to go 2 million light years to get into the closest large galaxy like our own, Andromeda. The key to capturing these faint fuzzies is planning. 10 minutes inside your nice warm house with a Star Charter astronomy software can save you hours of frustration in the shivery outdoors. No matter where you're observing from, chances are the sky will not be pitch black. There will be some light pollution. Fortunately, there's an accessory that you can use to help combat the effects of light pollution. And it's called, appropriately enough, a light pollution filter or a nebula filter. So how do they work? Well, nebulas emit light primarily in the red and green portions of the visible spectrum, whereas uh, mercury vapor and sodium lights the lights that are responsible for most of the light pollution you see emit in the blue and yellow regions of the spectrum. So ideally, you'd want a filter that could block the unwanted wavelengths of light from those mercury vapor and sodium lights and transmit to the eyepiece only those wavelengths of light that are emitted by the nebulas. So in effect, they darken the background sky and they do not darken by nearly the same amount the nebula. So the effect is that the nebula sort of pops out of the background sky much more prominently than what you'd see in a light polluted sky. There are three different types of light pollution or nebula filters. There's a broadband filter, a so-called narrow band filter, and an ultra narrow band or a line filter. Each of them blocks light to a different degree, and each is useful, therefore, in different light pollution conditions. Here's an example of a broadband filter. It's the Orion Skyglow filter, and it has the least amount of blockage, a wide band pass, and it's good for use in low to moderate light pollution. And the interesting thing about this filter is that it improves the contrast for all types of celestial objects. It's most prominent on nebulas, but it also does a good job of improving contrast for galaxies and star clusters as well. So it's a good general use light pollution filter. This is a narrow band filter called the Orion Ultrablock, and it has a narrower band pass, so it blocks more light. It produces a higher contrast view of nebulas. Uh, it's great for use in uh, heavy light pollution in a, a city or a heavy suburban environment. And it provides great views of nebulas primarily. It won't do much for galaxies and star clusters. The third type of filter is an ultra narrowband filter or a line filter. This is called an oxygen three filter. And this transmits wavelengths only in a very, very narrow window of the spectrum at doubly ionized oxygen lines, to be specific. This type of filter is primarily used for looking at certain types of nebulas, planetary nebulas, and also supernova remnants, such as the Veil Nebula and the Crab Nebula. Now, light pollution filters or nebula filters actually work even when there isn't a whole lot of light pollution. They thread into an eyepiece like any other filter, as long as the eyepiece barrel has threads, the filter goes in like that. Put your eyepiece in your focuser or diagonal, and you're ready to go. And nebula filters come in different sizes. This is a standard one and a quarter inch filter. 
This is a two inch filter to fit in two inch eyepiece barrels. And this is a filter that threads into the rear cell of a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. If you only have room for one light pollution filter in your budget, I would recommend getting a narrow band filter such as the UltraBlock. You'll enjoy dramatically improved views of nebulas in any kind of light pollution setting. You'll see a dramatic difference. Thank you.